Hey guys, Exotic here. So, the most common I'm, question I'm asked is, how do I improve? How do I get better at Crossfire? And I usually say, well, practice. Uh, and the most common follow-up question to that is, well, what settings should I use when I practice? What hardware should I use? What mouse do you use, Reed? What mouse do you use? What mouse pad? What keyboard? What monitor? And usually I don't go too in-depth with that. I have an FAQ on my stream that people can refer to, but in general I tend to avoid giving advice on settings and hardware. But I thought about it and I think that that's a bit unfair and I'm going to give at least a little bit of guidance for people maybe just starting out or who are just just now recently really taking self-improvement to a new level in Crossfire. Alright, so before we begin with any hardware recommendations or in-game settings that you might want to tweak and adjust, there is one thing that no matter what your mouse, whatever your game, whatever your in-game sensitivity for whatever game you're playing, there's one setting that you need to change on your computer. So you'll open up the mouse property section. You do that by navigating through your run menu. You just type in mouse. It'll open up in any windows. Uh, depending on your operating system or if you're using a Mac, you might need to go through a different process. So just Google that and figure it out. So once you have your mouse properties window open, you're going to go to pointer options and you're going to uncheck Enhance Pointer Precision. This is very important. Now, unchecking Enhance Pointer Precision will essentially remove mouse acceleration from your computer. Now, most mice have built-in mouse acceleration, so you can't get around that, but you can always adjust and turn off your Windows mouse acceleration that's built in. For example, if I check this and I move the same distance on my mouse pad, this is, I'm going to move one inch slow, and now I'm going to move one inch fast. The same distance slow, same distance fast. That's terrible. Whereas if I uncheck this, slow, fast. Slow, fast. So there's no, there's no difference in there whatsoever if it's unchecked. But if you check it, again, you're going to just throw off anything that you do with your mouse just by doing slightly different speeds of movement. So you always want to uncheck that before you adjust any setting in game. It's imperative. So here we are. I'm showing you guys the hardware that I use. This is my setup. You can see that I have my monitor and my router on the same desktop. I have a Cooler Master Pro keyboard. My mouse is a Death Adder 2012 Razer. I use a QCK Heavy, not Plus, though I don't think so it really matters. Here so are my as Crossfire settings. Uniform I'll start at the top and work my way and down throughout the entire my computer underneath my game. I play on 1024 by 768. I use Siberia V2. The reason for that, that is the 8 by 6 view that I have is from my too blurry at long range for me to accurately see. Uh, for example, port a top to a long, and vice versa, and Black Widow barracks to a ramp. Higher resolutions are easier to see at long range, but the ratio of pixel size to headshot size makes it a lot harder the higher your resolution goes to actually headshot people. A color I used to play on 16-bit, I now play on 32-bit because 16-bit lets you see through smokes easier and is banned in competitions. Textures I play on high texture. It doesn't really matter uh, which one you choose, it just, makes the, it just makes the line stand out slightly more on high texture. I play on full screen, though I play on black bars, so my screen is not stretched. Bullet trace high and smoke high, these are both very, very important because that allows you to track accurately where people come from. Bullet smoke, however, is not important and, in fact, arguably should be turned off, but out of preference I prefer it on high. The bullet smoke is the puff of smoke whenever your bullets run into a wall, and it if it's on low, you can more accurately see exactly where your bullets land, so you're more likely to be able to control your spray more. However, at long ranges, you can't see the specific bullet holes from your spray, so at mid to long ranges, it makes the spray control itself much harder to do. So I keep it on high. Blood effects, I keep turned on. This is marginally important. If blood effects are off, you can't see someone behind a box if you shoot them, 
and in this case if blood is on and I shoot, even though I may not see their character model, I can see the blood splatter on the ground and know that they're behind a box. Weather effects I turn off, bullet trails I turn on. Bullet trace is the bullets on the wall, bullet trail is whether or not you see the bullets flying through the air. If you are quick enough in your vision, you can generally see not just that a bullet was fired, but you can see the direction and speed at which it's traveling, and you can learn which gun it is based on the bullet trail, as well as where exactly they're shooting from. Weather effects, there is no benefit to using that. What it does is it changes the sky on certain maps, so it's harder to see and line up nades and smokes, so I keep that turned off. Gamma is interesting because gamma matters a lot for seeing through smokes. If I turn my gamma to zero, it clicks save, the game gets much darker. However, in doing so, I can see through smokes much more effectively. For every 10 or 15 that you raise your gamma, you're going to noticeably see better or worse through smokes. I keep my gamma on 44 because there's a noticeable difference between 45 and 50 and 44, and any brighter and it hurts my eyes. So this is, and any darker I can't accurately see on subbase and other dark regions on other maps. So I keep my gamma at 44 and it allows me to see through smokes better than at 50 without compromising seeing in dark areas clearly. So for controls, I use the standard movement of WASD. I use control for crouch, shift for walk, and spacebar for jump. Now, the one difference that I do that most people don't is for my throwing weapon, which is your grenade, I use the F key. And that allows me to really quickly cycle through my grenades just by hitting the F button. So my sensitivities, I use 4 mouse sensitivity and 26 zoom sensitivity. And sensitivity is a topic that a lot of people misunderstand. Some people think that there's a magic sensitivity and setting combination that is going to make you play better. And in general, there are only two rules you should follow when you're selecting a sensitivity. The first rule is that you can comfortably turn around. That way, if you're ever getting shot at from behind, it is not a struggle or it is not a multiple second ordeal for you to turn around and deal with it. Additionally, this matters for dodging flashes, as well as certain movement things like bunny hopping or Harvey jumping. My zoom sense, in general, snipers play with a very high sensitivity. I'm not sure why this is. Um, it tends to be preference. I think it's because since you're zoomed in you can see less of your screen so you may need to flick further. But your sensitivity with a scope should be as slow as you comfortably can play with, in my opinion. Um, that is because opping you really do not want to miss because you have such a long wait in between shots and the slower your sense, the less likely you are to miss easy shots. And the second rule for regular mount sensitivity is that it is not so fast. For example, if you're in the 20, 21, 22 range, you don't want to make it so fast that whenever you go to fully swipe, your character is doing more than a 360. That is excessive, and you're just making your life more difficult on yourself. Miscellaneous. I use yellow and A. Uh, there's no difference. There's no proper crosshair to use. They all work fine. Now there is one more key thing to adjust on any of your mice that you choose to use, and that is your hertz, your polling rate of your mouse. All right, so here we have Razer Synapse pulled up. DPI should be as high as you can comfortably make it and comparatively lower your in-game sensitivity. The reason for this is pretty straightforward, and that is your mouse, the higher your DPI, the more accurate you can move your mouse. So for example, if you move your hand one, one micrometer and it's 2000 DPI, it will actually register it. Whereas if it's 400 DPI and I move my hand one micrometer with my mouse, it won't even register the input. Acceleration should always be zero. Um, I can't think of any circumstance in any game in which you would want mouse acceleration. Uh, the lower the better. Polling rate is kind of a contentious thing. In Crossfire, the higher your polling rate, the less mouse acceleration you have from the built-in engine. However, with higher polling rates, your mouse will be wavy. So if I go left to right, my crosshair would do this, moving up and down if my polling rate were higher than 125. With 125 hertz, you still have a minor wave. 
something like akin to this, but it's incredibly small compared to the higher polling rates. So I cannot recommend any other's polling rate other than 125 hertz. Now, having said all of this, ultimately it's preference. There is no sensitivity, there is no tweak. If you are playing bad, the reason that you're playing bad is not your settings, it's you. There is no circumstance in which this is not true. You could have a cheap $20 mouse with a 125 FPS game and a 60 hertz monitor. And if you have all of that and you are doing bad, the reason you're doing bad is because you are bad. Uh, there's no easy way of putting that. There's no solution to that other than practicing and getting good. One of the best players in North America, Brandon Brogan, solo. I went to China with him in WCA. He, during the qualifier and leading up to that event, only played on a 80 FPS computer. He used a cheap $10 Logitech mouse, and he did have a nice monitor, but his computer wasn't even good enough, did not run Crossfire with a high enough frame rate to adequately and completely use the benefits of his monitor. So in spite of having a 144 hertz monitor, he could only play on 80 hertz crossfire set. And the reason he was able to perform as well as he did is because he put in the work and he practiced to get to that level. So unfortunately, no matter what settings you use, the best solution you can do to improve is practice. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you learned a lot from this video. I am going to put up another tips and tricks video this coming week. It will be on Subbase. I'll be covering a couple of the boosts and maybe a couple of nade spots. I'm still not sure what exactly I'm going to do moving forward with series such as that. But I hope you guys enjoy it. Thanks for watching. Peace.